We are joined by Operations Director Vincentia Dlamini. Uh, thank you for being with us in studio, Vincenti. Where, where does Women and Men Against Child Abuse stand? Uh, do you believe it was important that she, she did testify today? I think the first thing that we need to acknowledge is how traumatic the court process is for every child. Mm. And looking at what Nino has said, his, sequen his sequence of events, he actually said that the child followed him and that, as the NPA has said, could have led to, when, when, this, when we go to sentencing procedures, means that it was not premeditated. And he also said that he stopped at some point. So it would be very interesting what the medical examination says in terms of the amount of force that he has, he has done. Because if maybe Nino, had, if we, the NP had accepted the fact that he just said that a uh, the child followed me and I acted out of impulse, it would have meant that what we're calling for as an organization, life imprisonment without parole, it was maybe going to be difficult for the NPA. And as an organization, we were there today and we, we were very concerned, concerned if this child is going to be secondary victimized, is this child going to be uh, in, in a closed circuit court, is the necessary uh, procedures being followed, has this child been assessed you know, through a, for a, a, a competency assessment to find if this child can really testify and will this child be able to relay what happens. And I think sometimes it is very, because each case varies with its own merits and said as is but should we have had Nina being left off the hook with a lighter sentence he would have gotten away with a lighter sentence and put the lives of more children at risk and we, we wouldn't have want this child to go through what they went through but unfortunately if the NPA wants to go for him and make sure that we get one prosecutor out of you know uh, out of the society and for them to do this was this way you know we we want the best interest of the child and unfortunately Nina in this case is the is the is the one that's further traumatizing the child in the sense that he could have said the truth but he's deviating from what the truth is and I think everybody is, is, is so concerned in saying that uh, the criminal justice is putting the child through this but in this case Nina is the one that is secondary victimizing because this he child. may have been lying he, and he, only she knows how to, how to yes clarify only that. this child knows how to clarify this but if it's told the truth and exactly how it happened and not twist the sequence of events this child wouldn't have to go through what the child go through because obviously the NPA sat down and listened to his plea because if the NPA had accepted his his plea his guilty plea that means they would have accepted also his sequence of events but those sequence of events were actually against what the child is saying so the the person that is actually committing this uh, trauma, putting this child through this trauma, is Nino himself. All right, so you felt it was important that she clarified the, the circumstances around the rape, who followed who to the bathroom, but you wanted her to be protected. As far as you know, um, uh, because it was in camera, were all those processes followed? Because we were, we were the, the proceedings were, were, were in camera. Obviously, we know that an intermediary was there. And I think we, we had a lot of faith in the judge because the judge seems like a very, very, you know, sensitive, sensitive judge because you could see when the, child, when the mother was becoming emotional because when the mother was testifying, we were there, even though we couldn't see her. Yeah. But when the mother was emotional, relaying what she saw, the judge was very sensitive in asking, do you want to continue, you know? Do we want us to take a break? So we have a judge here who is sensitive. We have a child who was, who, who was on the other side with an intermediary. No child should have to go through that. But unfortunately, each case, we have to look at its own merit. Generally, so, so you've obviously followed a lot of cases. Uh, sometimes children are called to testify. Does our criminal justice system protect these child victims? And from that, that concern, secondary victimization. Unfortunately, you know, the system cannot protect children. Once you are in the criminal justice system, you are going to be secondary victimized because you have to relive that. You have to go through that. And in other instances, children 
see their, 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 their abusers at court because sometimes the children are not protected. But in this case, the child was protected from the media, the child was protected from the public. You know, the, the judge made it very clear and you could see how the, how the child was protected even through the intermediary room. Nobody was was yeah. closer to the intermediary room. But in other cases that we know generally, sometimes the child has got to see. The, the, the offender on, on, on passages. How, how often does that happen? It happens quite a lot and it's up to our prosecutors, it's up to our presiding officers to make firm judgments in, 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 in how children, child victims have got to be protected yeah. throughout, this, throughout the, 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 the process of testifying. I, I followed a, a pedophile case once and it was at a magistrate's court chock a block with with cases uh, and the parents were complaining that they kept on preparing their children coming to court and then it wouldn't happen uh, because the case would be delayed again and again and again um, very traumatic for for the children and this uncertainty uh, so does that happen often and we we have said this previously as an organization to say that this case how this case has been managed because of the um, being on you know being on the media and it's out there everybody's following it and we see that everything has been done you know you know the child is taken for therapy you know there are no unnecessary delay the offender is taken for a psychiatric evaluation process are being followed but this case this is this is how all cases need to be handled yeah. so not this is only a this case. one yeah. this is a model case and we know that you know not all cases not all cases are handled this manner and we are appealing to our presiding officers to our prosecutors to everybody that's dealing with child cases to social workers who are doing these assessments not to delay the process to have their assessment report on time to have children been protected to have everything done in order dna results to be available at the right time so in this case this is how we would like to see except for the part that children should not be testifying yeah. when they don't have to testify what, what what is that worst case scenario when we talk about secondary victimization? What, what have you seen or heard about? Worst case scenario is the fact that you would find that the, uh, an offender that is on bail, they're going to use the same entrance into the court, no, uh, you know, investigating officer that's going to fetch the child, take them to court, and the child has got to be exposed. Sometimes children don't receive adequate therapy sometimes children are not going to get, to get adequate court preparation you know sometimes there's numerous uh, delays because there's no reports that are submitted the, the the statements that need to be presented are not there the dna results yeah. are not there Traumatic so it's going the to be yes, well. it's going to take years we've got cases where you know postponements three years down the line there's still postponements there's still postponements so yeah. in this case a date was set 19 to the 20th and we are here everything is available so this is how we want to see our case has been handled so so it's uh, look it, it sounds dire but like you say at least this is a, a model case showing how it could be done the fact is if the circumstances were different maybe she would have had to talk about the rape um, does that happen often what are what are the repercussions and and how can that be handled sensitively when, t when you talk about when, the when a child so, so this time the MPA said she didn't have to talk about the rape. It was more about the circumstances leading up to the rape. But sometimes, if somebody pleads non -gil uh, not guilty, a child does have to confirm that they were raped. Just, just tell us what what children can go through in in the legal system. Okay. Like I've explained before that, you know, children have got to, you know, go back to, to, to relive the trauma. Yeah. You know, we, we have, identi yes, is, is we have identification parade where a child has got to actually point exactly who's the person that raped me. Children has got to state exactly how it happened, how it happened, and, and have to go through that. And sometimes if a child breaks down, the case is going to be withdrawn, and then the child has got to go and come back when they're ready to testify. So it is. It is a very emotional, um, you know, process to go through. Not only for children, even adults. So you can imagine, for children, it is very, very traumatic. And it has to be handled well. To it has to be handled trauma. very well, sensitively. So, and I think the the shame has got to be with the abusers. They need to understand. But unfortunately, we're talking about people who have no disregard for the you know the well-being of children. Mm. So it is up to whoever that is handling.
handling the case. It's up to the prosecutor to minimize secondary victimization as much as possible. All right. Thank you for your time this evening. That was the Operations Director of Women and Men Against Child Abuse, Vincentia Lamini.